Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman, and this is the Largely Catechized Life. So one day Adam and Eve were in the garden doing, you know, garden stuff, and uh, the devil walks in, and he talks to Eve, and he tells her something that she's kind of been thinking about for a little while now. He says to her, you know that tree of knowledge of good and evil? You should eat that fruit. You'll not die. You'll be like God. And Eve says, yeah, if I'm like God, I won't need him anymore. If I'm like God, it won't erase God. He'll still be there, but, well, I won't have to depend on him for anything else. But the first commandment is that you shall have no other gods before me. You shall fear, love, and trust in God above all things. And that is a problem because ever since Adam and Eve were in the garden, well, our favorite God has always been ourselves. Money's great. Power is wonderful. But my favorite God, my favorite God is me. And this gives way to some of the most vile behavior that you see inside of a church. Luther writes, besides, there is also a false worship and extreme idolatry that seeks in its own works help, consolation, and salvation, presumes to wrest heaven from God, and reckons how many bequests or prayers it has made, how often it has fasted, celebrated mass, as though it is unwilling to receive anything from God as a gift. So here's the thing. If you think that you need to buy God off by praying enough to finally win him over, if you think that forgiveness of sins rests on your ability to go to church enough to finally cancel them all out, if you think that you can do enough good to get God's favor, well, then you're not trusting God. You're trusting your ability to bribe him. You're trusting your ability to buy him off. And at the end, what is this but reducing God to an idol and elevating and regarding ourselves as God? What is this but saying, God, I'll play the music, you better dance. I'll get it started, you better fulfill your role. I'm in charge, and I'll get this thing going when and where I please. But God says, no, no, that's not going to fly. You see, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall fear, love, and trust in me above all things, not yourself. Really, at the end of this, the whole article of justification that Lutherans paint is given right here. Trust in God and him alone. This is just who he is. He will not allow you to buy him off because he insists on doing it all for you. Prayer is not about annoying God into finally giving you what you want. It's trusting that God will take care of you. Church is not winning Jesus' points, but it's eating and drinking of the forgiveness of sins that he so graciously pours out. Good works will not buy God off. He has already done them all by giving himself upon the cross and rising from the dead. When he says, you shall have no other gods before me, what he means is that you're not going to be God because I'm going to do it all for you. <laughs>